Hey everyone, so today I'm excited to share with you guys one of my favorite things. We are going to talk about gardening in today's video and I'm going to share with you guys how to set up a hay bale garden. But before we dive into how to set up a hay bale garden, I wanted to take a couple minutes and just encourage you guys. I've had so many questions, one asking how to do this and just the process, so I am excited to share it with you. I have done a hay bale garden a couple times over the years, and I will put a link to, it's a pretty old video of a tour of that hay bale garden that we had. But I want to share with you guys just a little bit about gardening. I think so many people get hung up and think that they don't have a green thumb or they don't know how to do it or their plants die and just get kind of stuck in the process or if there's failure. And let me tell you guys that there's going to be failure in gardening. One, we are working with living things and living things die if we don't care for them right or you know, sometimes just the plant itself isn't good. Plants are kind of like people and they have specific needs and learning those specific needs helps you produce better with your plants or, you know, with your vegetable plants. And the biggest thing is not to let the fear of failure stop you because there's going to be mishaps. Bugs, pests are a big nuisance and they come in and, you know, can devour a plant in a day. It's very disheartening when those things happen. But there's always something to learn through those struggles. Just like in life, whenever we go through a hard time or a struggle, we learn from it. And it's the same with gardening when, let's say, you know, it just doesn't go exactly how we had hoped, but we can learn from it. So don't let that stop you at trying your hand at gardening. I have failed many times with many different plants and I just keep trying until I figure it out and learn, you know, how to grow a cucumber and you know some years are just better than others for certain vegetables as well some year the pest pressure is stronger for certain plants but i am constantly reading and learning and just trying to figure out what is going to work for my area for my yard and for my garden so hay bale or straw bale <laughs> i've had some people say that this is actually straw not hay it really doesn't matter which ones you get whether it's hay bales or straw bales um, either one of them will work for doing a garden. So I did not come up with this idea. I wish I could take credit for it, but I actually read about it in a book several years ago. And then I saw a ton of YouTube videos on how to set it up. So if you actually just search in YouTube, hay bale gardening or straw bale gardening, you will get several channels pop up with the ideas and how they have set this up to work for them. So I have not planted in these hay bales yet and I am dying to get my plants in there. So you have to wait about 10 days after you start the process of treating the hay bales before you can plant in them. This is one of the easiest gardening methods that I think that everybody should try at least once. So go get some hay bales and join me. We got 12 hay bales this year and you can get hay bales or straw bales from your local feed store or a store like Tractor Supply. We got these from the feed store because there was about a $3 price difference and it was more affordable to get them at the feed store. So the idea behind the hay bales is that you want to set them up how you want them so you can't move them after you start watering them because they're going to be way too heavy to move. Um, so we did four rows of three bales and then you feed it with a fertilizer for 10 days every other day. So it's super simple. So this is the fertilizer that I got. Looking back, I wish I would have gotten bone meal, but it didn't cross my mind. I had already purchased it. So I'm just using what I have. I got this at Walmart, it's Sunnyland fertilizer. You just wanna make sure that the nitrogen, that the numbers are relatively even. One of them's nitrogen, phosphate, and I can never remember the other one. I think I have that right, but so you just want to feed it. You just sprinkle a little bit on your hay bale, about a cup every other day, and then you water them every single day. And that's it as far as the process of feeding the hay bales. The hardest part is just waiting the 10 days to be able to plant in them. So during that 10 days, what's happening is that nitrogen is getting inside the hay bales and the water and in the middle of the hay bale is kind of creating like a compost pile and it starts decomposing inside. So in a sense, you are planting in a you know, living compost pile because it's just going to keep decomposing over time and your plants are continually being fed obviously and so the fertilizer is speeding up this process is what the fertilizer is doing. 
And once you get this, I'll show you guys, is when you open up the hay bale to start planting in, it is so warm in there and that's what plants like is heat and that's what helps them grow. So in my experience, so I've done this a couple times and I've also had raised beds and I've done, you know, grow bags, I've done potted plants. The hay bales far outweighed anything and did so much better than my hay bales. Now, the cost price, like for a one-time garden, it's gonna be cheaper to do the hay bales. I price compared for this year, trying to decide what I wanted to do. Well, I needed a temporary garden this year, so hay bales won in that option. Now, if you are looking at doing more of a permanent garden, it takes time to build a garden. So doing something like raised beds or something like that, or a no-till garden, you're gonna spend a lot of money in the good compost that you're gonna bring in. You can make compost yourself. And actually our zoo gives out free compost. So there are places that help, you know, gardeners. I love that, getting the, we call it zoo poo around here. Um, I actually missed out on it this year. I didn't get there in time, y'all. But, so there are other options to help make gardening more affordable. So if you're putting your resources into building a permanent garden, doing something like raised beds may make more sense. And then you're putting your investment into building the soil each year. Because the hay bales, in my experience, really do only last one year. I did try planting in them a second year and they just weren't as, productive as they were the previous year. So that is the stuff that I have learned through this. Now let's get some plants in these hay bales. start out by planting zucchini. So I actually got this from my local plant store. It's a four cell pack. I think the price for these are like $3.49. There's actually two plants in each cell as well. So that's eight plants, <laughs> which I don't even have room for eight plants. So I'm going to have to give them away to a friend. I did even plant, so perfect example of things not going as planned. I did try to start zucchini and squash seeds and they didn't sprout. I don't know why. They probably were old seeds. Something about it just didn't work, but that's okay. I just went to my local store and bought some starts. So hopefully y'all can see well of what I am doing here. So I do have a bag of soil here. So even though we are planting in the hay bales, you do need soil, but not as much as obviously if you were filling a raised bed. So you just want to pry the hay bale open. You can even pull some out. It, you really can't you know, hurt anything. Basically, you are making a hole in the hay bale. So let's get some of this hay out. Can you hold this? Uh, no, it's fine. So one thing that I have noticed with hay bale gardening is the pest pressure seems so much lower than whenever I've done other types of gardening, which I mean, the ultimate goal is to get some vegetables before the pests do. So that is, a very nice thing about the hay bale gardening. Okay, so I've got a decent sized hole and you can feel the warmth inside. Now we're gonna get our plant start in there. All right, so like I said, this is, hang, hang on, there's actually two plants here. So what we're gonna do, yep, is separate them. And then get a little bit of dirt from the bag. Reagan's over here helping me. I've got a cup over here if you wanna use a cup. Yep, put a little bit of dirt in the hole. Yep, and now we're gonna put the plant in there and then put dirt, yep, put dirt all around it. Put hay. Yep, put a little more dirt, soil. I always call it dirt. I'm trying to change what I call it because it's soil. All right, put some more. Yep, put some more. Good job. And that is our first plant start in the hay bales. Should we put a little hay around it? You can if you want. Then I also like to plant marigolds. You can actually plant in the side of the hay bales as well. Marigolds help keep um, certain bugs away. Here. Good job. That looks like your plants yep. is going. <laughs> okay, so we have four zucchini plants planted and we are gonna do cucumbers here in a minute. But one thing that I wanted y'all to note is that we put a good amount of soil along the base and over time, the soil is gonna get washed away. It's gonna go into the hay bale. It's gonna fall onto the ground and that's okay. Just when you see that happen, just add a little bit more soil to the top of your plants. 
All right, something else that I want to know is that when you put two hay bales together, it kind of creates two natural holes. And this is a perfect spot for herbs or flowers. So Reagan and I are gonna plant basil in this one, and then I'm gonna put seeds for marigolds in the other ones. So herbs and flowers, well, some herbs get really big, but they don't need as much space as the vegetable plants, but it's just the perfect spot for them. So I take the hay from the hole that we create or made for planting, a vegetable plant and then I just shove it down in there and then add some more soil and then we'll plant our basil plant. Yep, just put a little bit of soil in there. Right here, you got it in the cup. Now you can just put it down in there. That actually we could separate too. That's a good idea, Reagan. <laughs> you know, we'll just keep it together for the sake of being simple. Yep. So look at that. You could actually separate all of that. All right. Now push it down. All of it? Yep. Okay, I'm coming. Okay. Oh, that's yep, coming. Yeah. Here we go. So planting in a hay bale garden is really that easy. So if you guys decide to try this, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about your gardening experience too. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us and we'll see y'all in the next video.